Liquorland are proud partners of the debrief for another season of footy. Pop into your local Liquorland today or shop online to pick up all your favourite drinks. Bit of gather round this weekend, Marker. We love Adelaide Oval. Uh, no G, but no. Uh, it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. That night on the hill, Clary from the pocket. Cam Patterson, massive. Cult figure. Yeah. Pedo! Love that. Liquorland from the land you love. Please drink responsibly. Let's get into the show. It was a stroll in the park in the West, but bigger tests lie ahead with gather round on the horizon and a match up against an old foe at Fortress Adelaide Oval. Welcome to the official unofficial podcast of the Melbourne Demons, The Debrief. I'm your host, Adrian Horton. And tonight, I'm joined in the studio by Tom Marcazzani. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Mate, great to have you on and uh, great to beat up on those Eagles last week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they have been a powerhouse for most of our lives and it's uh, it's nice to be the team that's more dominant at the moment. Absolutely. You're certainly not a, a fan of them either, having lived over there and put up with their bullshit. No, I never was. I mean, they, were, they brought in a state team and they won those flags early and they've just always had success. So it's it's about time that they stink, <laughs> like hard. I, I, I want them to suffer for a while. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. And the, the laughter there is from not Matt Adams, the, uh, the older, uh, better looking version, Sam. Sam, good to have you on. Thanks for having me. Good Mate, to be back. Great to have you on. And uh, I have given you a bit of cheek over the journey, calling you the ring in. But um, certainly last year, there was a lot of people um, checking in on the page saying, get Slammer back on, get Slammer back on. So I'm not buttering you up there. <laughs> so I have no doubt there's a lot of people out there listening that are happy that you're here. But I just wanted to ask you off the top, we're a month in. These are three and one. The loss against Brisbane was a bit of a kick in the guts. But Man, the way we've re responded in the past two weeks, the win against the Swans was bliss because we hate them um, and they've been killing us for years. And last week, hardly got out of second gear, just chalked up another four points, lazy 10-goal win. Um, there's probably still room for improvement. So I guess we're sitting as well as we could be. Yeah. I mean, the first, I always say, give it a, a six to eight weeks to <clears throat> try and really see where everyone's sort of landing. Um in a new football season. Um, I think for us, I'm really encouraged by what we've seen so far. Um, I think we've won, we've won our last two by combined 113 points or something like that. Um, Brisbane, I think we were, we were well and truly beaten in that game. Had the lights not gone out, we probably would have beaten, beaten been beaten by 40 plus. But look, I think, um, it's been a really good start to the year. Um, our scoring is is as be as good as it's been over the last sort of five six years, and if we can keep that up, and make sure that our um, our defensive unit stays the way it has been over the last few years, I think we're in really good shape. So I didn't get a chance to do a review pod. Uh, got struck down by a bit of food poisoning. I'm not going to actually out the uh, the pub because um, I love the pub in the establishment, um, but it did happen to another friend uh, who, was, who was there. So, What was, are we talking to Palmer? Uh, we're, we're talking a steak. Which is surprising. Steak. Yeah, you don't that's often odd. hear that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we're talking a steak. So I, I know my wife, uh, Faye, thinks it was gastro, but trust me, I think I know what it was and I've had gastro. Did you made before. order the steak too? Uh, no, they ordered something different, but they were suffering from the same symptoms. And uh, Anyway, I've landed on food poisoning. That's where okay. I've gone with it. Um, so that was great fun. So I was absolutely- Sounds sus, but okay. Yeah. yeah. Different foods. Don't yeah, I don't that. know about that. Yeah. yeah, I know. Anyway, it's what I want to go with. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was on the couch all day Tuesday, um, slept pretty much the whole day, 10 hours sleep that night. Um, and I'm back on deck and feeling good and uh, just want to do a bit of a recap of the Eagles game. And we'll probably start here. And it happened today, Trent Rivers signing on until the end of 2027. His game on the weekend when he moved into the midfield, I thought he was awesome. I think his start to the year has been awesome. I'm just loving his trajectory as a player, and he's someone that had to work pretty hard to get back into the team at one point, like a few players have. Like Bow, Lil Bow Wow, your man, had to do a bit of a stint marker mm. back at Casey. It's not the worst thing in the world, but Riv Dogs, like he's a man now. I think he's really proving himself. I love the fact he's a WA boy and he's never, ever showed any intentions about leaving this club. He clearly loves the club. He's committed for another four years. But 
I said it to Scotty today in a text. Like, I actually think he's one of those players that's flying under the radar. We speak about Sparrow becoming, you know, the next Petrarca and he's got a bit of Jack Viney about him. But, like, maybe Trent Rivers is that one that could end up becoming a genuine out-and-out superstar in the midfield, take over from a tracker or a Clary one day. We could easily be just indulging in, in on this point too much because he signed today and we're all pretty happy for him. But the more I look at his numbers and the more I looked at his game last week and how he performed that midfield role like effortless, effortless. I can't say it effortlessly. I'm not even going to try. Mm. <laughs> like he did it with there. a he did it with a plum. Like he looks he looks so at home. I remember in in 2021 when he was like his form was unreal off the half back line and. You know, he, he was playing with freedom and he, he gave us a lot of run and carry last year. Clearly, um, he had a down year and like that happens with with players who are, he's still so young, right? What is he, 21 or something? Yeah. Um, but I remember in that year I said I could eventually see him playing on a wing. I reckon, I reckon he could really fit into that spot well because he reads the play really well um, and he just has this kind of burst of speed and kind of hardness it's about a great him kick as well such a good kick good decision maker um and yeah the reason why we are looking as good as we are is because we're not like last year relying on your tracks your olivers to do what they do every single week it's people like rivers who are stepping up it's it's people like chris who are coming in and you know we need that if we're going to win a flag again right like we we can't rely on our top five players yeah and as you, good as they are you talk <clears throat> about the first month, that, that's that been the most encouraging thing for me, I reckon, is mm. Goody, and you, you speak to a lot of Melbourne supporters about this, they were so frustrated last year that you sort of felt like Goody had, you know, he just won a premiership and he's like, well, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm. Like, he, he wasn't willing to change many magnets around. Which whereas, is even in pretty game, fair enough as yeah, well. Yeah, but in, in game this year as well, um, you know, switching Petty forward and back and um, – some of the changes, I think, it, you know, week to week have been really, really good. So that's, again, if, you, if you're going to recap the first month, that's been really solid for us as well. The influx of Kate Chandler, I mean, before the start of the year, we, we were kind of um and arm in of like, you know, is he just kind of this this VFL player that's a nearly kind of player that, you know, good emergency for us, but he's leading the comp in goal assists and he's just, he's gut running. Um yeah, I remember we spoke about that goal as soon as he kicked it against Sydney. Like, mm -hmm. just that effort alone, it's just it's enormous to be able to provide that. And um, another player we spoke about before the start of the year, which who we love, who probably had a little bit of a down last year, is Spargo again. So these players are, for me, the reason why we're we're just we're hitting that gear again. And it's early days, but like if we're gonna go again and and reach the pinnacle again. You need that from those players. And huge feather in the cap to Jason Taylor and, and the whole recruitment team. Like there's an article I was reading on the way in actually um, in The Age about Rivers and that it talks to some of the players we picked up. I think it's after pick 29 in the draft and all those guys you mentioned there, like Spargo, Frida, uh, Rivers, I think. I don't know what Sparrow was, but I think he was pretty high as well. But there's five or six of them that we've picked up just out of nowhere. Yeah, early And they're 30s, all getting games it's... regularly and, and having now the, the impact that, you know, we, we had hoped for a long time. Mm. The amazing thing is our average median games average last round was 132. Geelong's like up around 156 or something stupid. We're second on that ladder. And you think, oh, we're getting a bit, a bit old. We're like in the middle for age. We're just in front of Essendon, and mm. Essendon proclaimed to be this like up and coming, super young list. We're still young as well because mm. we've been able to get games into players like Rivers, who's played fifty six. I read this on the train coming in. It's not that I just know this. <laughs> um, Spargo's already played. Um, I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of eighty seven games, and he's only twenty three. So we're able to persist. Sparrow would have to be. Around the 70 yeah. mark, right, as we're, well. But we were able to persist with players and keep them in the 22, 23 for a long, long time from the, the moment they were kind of 18, 19, 20 and just continue to give them games and continue to give them experience. So the mix and the balance at the moment just it seems absolutely perfect to me. Chandler's been phenomenal. I love his work rate. 
I love how clever he is. The eight goal assists, which is a league high that you reference, Marker. He's getting all of his just desserts at the moment. And again, it comes back to the point that we're making last week, myself and Kados, about how well we're starting to utilize the VFL. It's starting to prove its worth. We were frustrated. We felt like we're holding players back. But if you're the coaching staff now, you're looking at it going, Chandler, Van Royen, Chris, those guys have come in and they have not missed a beat. Mm. Like they look so at home. And they, they're at home because they've been able to develop with no major pressure at Casey. But then when you get your opportunity, if you're some of those blokes, you're like, I'm going to I'm gonna play for the jumper. I'm going to try my heart out because I don't want to lose my position. So that's what I like about the competition for spots at the moment. James Harms, there's no certainty coming back in. Even Christian no. Salem, there's an <clears throat> argument there that if he's not at full tilt, and I know he's your boy and you love him, Marker, but... <laughs> oh, if he's fully pity place. <laughs> Uh, but like I, I, I know, what, I know what you mean. And then you look at that, and you see Tom McDonald, right? Like, yes, he he kicked for on the weekend. A couple of them were, you know, goal square type end of like good run of play. It wasn't like he kind of really asserted himself. He had a couple of good pinch hints in the rock and the goal from the squ- like center square region. That was great. But it was good to see him, you know, get some goals back on the board. But to be honest, I think. Van Ruin holds his spot still, um, but I think the weather's going to be a little bit average, and I would I would hold off on Brown. I don't I don't think there's any rush to play him, mm. um, and and kind of give those two guys another week to be like, all right, who really wants a spot? Because if Brown's a hundred percent, he plays at the moment. I think we well we obviously find out soon when the the teams come out, but for me. I would probably continue to persist with T-Mac, Van Royen, a little bit smaller, a little bit more mobile. I, I, for me, it feels like it's working. I'm starting to feel like there's a case for you can only have one or the other, T-Mac or Brown, because yeah. it looks like it's working out with JBR. I think JBR needs to play for the next month. Like, yeah. you know, th- there's been too many times in the past where we've had people come in for a game and go out. Like, think Wiedemann. Wiedemann, yeah. Wiedemann sure. could never get any consistency. And, and look, maybe he wasn't up to it. Anyway, but I think Van Ruin's already shown enough to to cement his spot for a month. And then, look, I think to your point about relying on and looking at the VFL team, it's it's you know it's a great position to be in having a, a football program that's got two really good teams. And Casey are a great team as well, so it helps they're winning, and they've got that winning culture. And you've got guys like Bailey Laurie on the weekend. I think he had thirty five. He's probably a really good chance to come in um, if Hibbard is out as well. So maybe they'll just move a few things around. But the forward line is going to be <clears> – <throat> it's going to move throughout the year. Like what 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 the starting six is now is going to be different to round 23, I've no doubt. But it's great that we've got options. Just on some working class men. So Spargo, uh, six goal assists already. He's starting to average more goals as well, as, as which is great. Um, his – 2022 averages, he averaged 0.4 goals, 0.6 goal assists. He's up at 1.5. What are his tackles at? I feel like he's hunting a hell of a lot more too. Yeah. yeah, I don't. His tackles are about 2.5. They're probably around where they normally are. But it's more just the fact that he's getting on the end. He's hitting the scoreboard. He's setting them up. That's a significant improvement. And then Nibbler had 11 tackles against the Eagles, which was a game high. Huge. Nibbler's another one. And these two blokes have been often maligned. But in 2021, when they were working their socks off and applying all that pressure, kicking goals, setting up goals, like they were absolutely, absolutely invaluable. Like you would look oh, at the They're almost sheet. barometers for us in a way. Like they're not going to- Mini gonna, barometers. Yeah, they're not going to, obviously yeah. not a barometer in the sense of a Jake Stringer, but in the sense that if they're firing, we're looking so good. You know what I mean? And- it just means that we don't have to rely on our on our big, you know, key well, you know killers what you're to get kind of them, get right? a win. You yeah. always know Clarion and Track are going to be there about, yeah. but when your bottom six starts stepping up 10, 15%, mm. that's when you start to see really good outputs and, and good wins. And Bro- yeah, Brody I mean, Grundy? And yeah. Oh, f- like, how good? Like, so good. I, I had a, a, a mate who goes for Collingwood and here we go. He's got a pretty good in at the club, knowing a couple of players, and 
you know, the word to me was that his body was pretty shot and, you know, that's the reason why they kind of offload him, among a lot of other things, salary cap, blah, blah, blah. Hang on. Do you reckon he was telling them, I can get back to full fitness and they're like, no, yeah, we've, we've assessed you. We think you're done. Do you reckon that was the vibe? From the I time? have no idea, but- Surely all- it was a million dollar tag. Oh, it's obviously that they shot themselves in the foot with salary stuff with Trelaw and him. Mm. Like they, they stuffed that big time. They paid him overs. But the- the talk was that his body was pretty shot. And like, yeah, last year his body was shot. And, you know, you never really know how you can kind of come back from ankles and stuff. But clearly he's put in so much work and he's a really proud person and he's had a point to prove. And, I mean, the Brisbane game, everyone was down and people were kind of jumping out and being like, oh, he's not, you know, he's not he's not the Ruckman. He's nowhere near, nowhere near as good as Max. And like, yeah, Max is... Max gone. Let's not compare him to him, <laughs> but mate, he's been bloody flawless since, been since that game. And that Brisbane game, you know, there was articles written after that that game saying, you know, how how is this going to work? You know, he's he's not really going to be a a solid step in for Max, if, you know, now that he's out. And it was really um, just jumping the gun, mm. you know, like. Think about May was a late withdrawal. Max goes down the first ten minutes, and the whole structure is just out. Yeah, and so then it's when not you up got to the, Grundy yeah. just to, to be able to fix that. And when you got even, I mean, even by Petrarca's standards, and he was uh, admitting to this straight after the game that he was massively down, and, and Oliver, and when, when everyone's down, it's like, what well, Grundy's not going to win us the game. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like it just everyone had a stinker, and whatever. But if he like, can keep getting yeah. twenty touches, or you know even averaging 18 touches a game, 30 hit outs. And the best thing about him is this link up play. So like the it's difference really between him player. and Max is that Max is a great sort of um, end-to-end sort of runner and takes big pack marks. Whereas Grundy is like another mid. He's running mm. through, giving really quick hands out to the to the guys. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. He had 22 and he only had 71% time on ground as well. Yeah. And, and let's also... I mean, he wasn't playing against Anana Nui or like, you know, who was he playing at Bailey Williams or someone like, you know, he, he you know, he's not like a, a really like decent opponent, but this is great because Max isn't in. And so he's getting a bit of confidence at the moment and he's going, oh, okay. You know. A bit of confidence. Yeah. Nuggets has done a full <laughs> backflip on this one. So the Quick nu- to jump the gun, Nuggets. So the nugget, Nuggets test is a great one and I needed to bring this up. I Why think more... No, but he was he was he was saying like we need to give this guy ten games, right? So mm. anyway, he has two relatively average opening rounds. He's also come from Collingwood, like it is kind no, of pretty. No, I know that. You know, I know that, that was where I'm I'm seeing that Nuggets was like more hating on him rather. But than- then, but then he does a then Brody does a few things. So Brody has a stormer against Sydney, who are a team that historically we've had stinkers against, and he dominates. And then he pulls these ones with the crowd and he's like kissing the badge and it's like Nuggets would have loved that secretly. And then he goes over and dominates in the West to the point where Nuggets in the WhatsApp thread goes, I love him. Like he fully turned. He I, didn't was, e- I was wrong. But he, he didn't he didn't even have to wait an extra six games. Yeah. Like he's on board. Look, yeah. we're only a month in as well. He, he's had a really good start. Yeah. If he could continue this and somehow be involved in a premiership, it would be one of the great pull-offs from the club. I, I think it's really important important to like look at his opponents as well. Laddams, whatever. Yeah. You know, if Hickey and Laddams was playing and he did that, then like, okay. Yeah. You know, if Natanui was playing, like, okay, whoa, holy crap. But he's, you know, he can only do what he can do against who he's playing against. But like, you know, he's coming up against what, a Draper, Draper. And, and, he's been, and a Phil. So, you know, if he- Draper's if he pull, very good. Yeah, for yeah, sure. And good. if he pulls that kind of game against like two Ruckman, then it's like, yeah. I could not agree more with that. If he if he has another awesome display and he gets the chocolates against the a two pronged ruck duo where one ruckman's very good, Sam Draper's going to be a star in yeah. one day. Yeah, and Phillips he's a toiler. He has a go. Mm, he's not yeah. bad. So the week be a huge after win. we've got Richmond and they don't have the nank. Mm. So it it could all these injuries seem to be falling our way at the moment. We lose our best ruckman, but then three of the four teams we come up against in his absence are missing their number one ruckman as mm. well. So it's sort of playing into Grundy's hands a little bit as well, yeah, for which sure. is perfect because he can get his confidence up and gel with the team. Yeah, that's a big outfit. I mean, and Lynch as well. Yeah. Tigers, I mean, I didn't I didn't buy into them at the start of the year anyway, no. but like they they might struggle to make finals. Our yeah. prediction's looking good. I think we had them ninth or 10th. Mm. Um, and I, I've, I've said it for a long time. I did not understand the Tigers' hype. The whole idea of their list is it was so disproportionate. 
too many young players coming in that had hardly played a game and then you got all those older players that are probably hanging on for a little bit too long. For me, it's a hunger thing. Like, Maybe. It's like they've got, they got three. I know. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like it's, they're not burning to get there. Like, you know, mm. they would want to, you know, and there's probably a, an aura of arrogance around them thinking that they are good enough to do it. But it's not like with Geelong where they didn't get one and they, this this group was always told they're too old. So they had like this burning hunger. But Richmond, they don't have it. And as I said, Castagna just retired at 26. He's like, eh, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> yeah, I've got three. Yeah, it's whatever. Time this for the next This isn't life. doing it for me. It's like, <laughs> all right. Do you reckon we're burning? Can you, do you feel yeah, like the fire's we, back? Yeah, because we want one at the G. Yeah. We want one at the G. I feel like the fans, I've spoken about this on a few shows recently. I feel like the fans are burning. Like the G and the D's fans have been loud. I reckon last year we were a bit tepid. We were a bit flat. I feel like we really want it. We're like, fuck, we really need one. We're in our sweet spot. I reckon the players want it hard. I reckon the players want it on one statistic alone that we were really shit on last year. And it was tackles inside 50, tackles in general, um, forward half pressure, all those ratings, which I think are some of the best in the game, particularly the modern game, mm. they're all through the roof again. So I actually think you can tell, and it helps that the players are fit again. They're, they're not maybe four, six weeks behind all the other teams as we had to you know, start preseason quite late after the flag. So I, I do feel like it's back. However, I do still feel like we're building into the season. Where do you guys sit on having a couple of losses? If you think back to last year, 10 and zip, probably covering over a few cracks that were emerging, not playing that well, but just winning games where, yeah, I think track was said it like they were just winning games on talent. Mm. You know, it wasn't, wasn't a pretty win um, for a few, for a few games there, but I, I kind of think losing to Brisbane in the way that we did and the margin was bigger than what it ended up being um, in round two is probably a sharpener that we need. Mm. And I think the same would be said for Collingwood losing to Brisbane as well. I, I just think having, even if we got to say the buy rounds at, you know, with two or three losses, not necessarily a bad thing. And if you break the season into almost thirds, so three games of eight, um, what's a, what's a win loss rate that you're looking at? Like for, me, for me, for me, it's more about the way in which you lose. Mm. So, so like, Mm. Uh, upon like reflection during the game, I was like, I think the whole Gorn thing like really rattled all fans, right? Like the the footage of that was just like, no, not now. Yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, we, you lose Max early on. You've got Brody in his second game at a new club. Uh, May's a late withdrawal. They're our two most important players structurally. You know are, what I mean? Yeah. Like it just that rattles a lot of things. And then you're playing Brisbane at the Gabba, and to their credit. They came out like absolutely hunting. So I will take that off. Well done. You got us. Look forward to playing you again at the G. So I'll cop like a loss like that. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's more about like not the wins or losses, but like how, yeah. how you win. Because I think as anyway. Melbourne supporters, we've got used to having these big runs. Like we won 17 games in a row. So yeah, lo- yeah, and people yeah. almost go into <laughs> games now expecting. And let's not forget, so that 17-game run, at the start of 2021, we also won nine in a row. Mm. So we've got used to going on these big runs. And mm. I, I just think that maybe sometimes it is better to have a loss here and there just to reset and mm. focus on some of the things that are, are apparent and in front of you that not that you don't just cover over. Yeah. Like for me, I like I consider um, the Swans win – like a double win or like a trip because yeah. we hadn't, we hadn't beaten him in so long. Eight points. So I'm happy to like drop a game against, I don't know, let's, let's call it a Adelaide at Adelaide over or something like that. But them, them being Sydney and Collingwood, we have for, to beat for Collingwood me are must year. wins. Yeah. They're like, they, they mean a lot. <laughs> they mean, already grimacing. Like for, it's more about getting that like kind of mental edge over the teams that have had it over us, which is the thing I think. Just thinking about King's birthday, just the thought of it this year, like leading into it, Brody on our side, Collingwood very good, yeah, deservedly second favourite for the flag, could easily be equal or outright favourite. I rate them that highly. I think their game plan is unreal. But even before this year when they were doing that thing, like 
They just beat us. But just it's yeah, not I know, a, you know, I know, you know, I know, like Bucks's last game, we played at the bucks? SCG, the and they weren't, you know, they weren't doing really. And like Darcy Cameron has this like stellar game. Oh. And it's like who is that? <laughs> yeah. Like it's just, Mason Cox did that in 2018 yeah. to us. I think he he won the the trophy at the end. Like the the very thought of King's birthday, and it's like so far out. It's like, oh my god, man! Yeah, I've never, I've never ever in my life wanted to beat them more. Does that, that get us beyond or before the, the halfway point? It gets us. It's that's... always, it always gets us to the bye. It's the last game before the bye. Okay, that's big. So it's huge. Um, I just want to rattle off the run. So we play Essendon on Saturday, obviously, win. Uh, <laughs> Richmond at the G, depleted win. Yeah. North at the G, win. Uh, Suns, where is it? It's up there. Win. Yeah. I still think Suns have a bit more to give. They do, but can we say but this? Is, that's one of the games that we might like drop. Yeah, like, see, I, I, that's what I mean. I, like, I'm if still, we lose I'm one still of waiting. <laughs> shaking his head. I'm still waiting happen. for Suns to see. I think they're going to win this weekend. Oh wait, they got Freo. Yeah. Oh, I hate Freo. Yeah. I hate Freo. Yeah. yeah. Get some form, Goldie. Oh. Get some death. Right. Imagine we get a pick, yeah. top five pick for Jackson. Oh. oh. And, then and then give it to Goldie. Back. Give us Ben King. Come on. So anyway, I'm saying, I'm saying Suns win, and I'm saying, oh, next game. Hawthorne. Oh, that's weird. And then I reckon this is where we potentially drop one, and it might be the good loss. Oh, it's this port. At, at, yeah. 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 Oh, hang on. We love Adelaide Oval. Win. Yeah, we'll get to that <laughs> later. Yeah. And then we've got Freo at the G. Win. Yeah, that's a big one. And then we've got that. Carlton Collingwood into the bye. Well, that's a huge fortnight. That's yeah. the big one. But if we happen to drop like the port one as an example, before we go into port, we're nine and one. Yeah. Mm. So we potentially go on this big run again. Mm. We have to capitalize on this period of the season because it gets much, much, much harder. Yeah. yeah. This and is then, the time you've got to bank them. Yeah, yeah. And then you can, you're in the position to start resting players. So remember last year, we, no, honestly, this is what Geelong did last yeah, year. Yeah, you're right. Last year we were 10 and zip and then we lost to Frio and then someone else straight away. Was it Sydney? Maybe? No, I can't remember. But, um, we didn't have that in our mind, I don't think, at all. Yeah, like, there we there were three games in a row where we'd lost at the G. Yeah, we weren't actually... I don't think we were thinking I about it. I flew home for that month. I witnessed every loss. I was like, oh, okay. If that happens this year, I hope we take a leaf out of um, Geelong's book. And look, we're not as old as Geelong. We don't need to do everything. No, but as, as, as we said before, we're in a yeah. position to if reward players yeah. in the VFL who are of, like, you know, We'd standard. walk into other teams. Yeah. And yeah. I think we. I mentioned this to you on WhatsApp today saying... It's going to be wet and wet and windy in Adelaide. It's Dunstan, you know, like mm. bringing someone just to throw a bit of grunt, you know. It's not a bad chat. I think teams are going to be here imminently. But like if I'm honest, I, I don't think he's going to get a game because it's hard to drop people and I feel like... He played like five or six last season, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he was okay. He just butchers it a bit. It's always been his biggest problem. He can find it. Oh, yeah, he can find it. He's very good at finding it. He got 12 Brownlow votes in his last... 12 ga- uh, in the last half a season with yeah. the Saints, I think. I like him. He might randomly bob up and play a few this season, but you can't see him being a rusted on at any point unless he has a berserk game where he's getting 30, he's hitting targets, he's setting up goals, he's potentially getting on the end, he's kicking goals, and you're like, oh, my God. The yeah, guy's and if you are going to gonna reward for him, it's probably going to be a Bailey Laurie that's going to come in. Yeah, and I hope a Jimmy Jordan for my – like. For me personally, I think a Jimmy Jordan will eventually be 22, not 23. Like I just really rate him. And I think it's amazing to be talking about a player that you really rate. He's a 22nd man. Can't believe he got dropped last week. And his cameo was good yeah. against the Eagles. Like really good. I mean, it's it's tricky when you're playing against a young West Coast who are tiring. We're running over the top of them. We're clearly way fitter than them to then, you know, spruik a game with a fresh guy coming off the bench. But... He did everything he could. He had eight touches. He was impactful. He was helping set up goals, blah, blah, blah. I think, yeah, for me, I reckon Jimmy Jordan will eventually be the 22nd and then it throws up who's your 23rd. Is it a flexible like T-Mac, Ben Brown, Tomo, Milkshake, Dunstan? Does a Howes eventually break in a Bailey Laurie? Like Blake Howes is going to be a real player. Like they rate the hell out of him down there. And I've watched a fair bit of Casey. I'm like, shit, that boy can move. Mm. It's just a natural footballer. Mm. Um, it's crazy how many we've got waiting in the wings that haven't played games well, yet. McVie, Jefferson looks really good. And McVie is a prime mm. example of that, waiting in the wings and then bang, he's in from round one. He's just a footballer. He's come in. Doesn't, I think, was it you? Chris. Someone said last oh, yeah. week that he reminds him of young um, uh, Jeremy Howe. 
which I can see. You know, he's got the same smarts. He's quick. He's agile. He moves. He's not super quick running wise, but I feel like his his decision making is really quick, and he's really pinpoint with his passes. You can just tell, but you can just tell between the ears. He's just yeah, he's a step ahead of everyone. He just else. doesn't sit on people's heads. Yeah, well, we haven't yeah, seen yeah. that yet, which yeah. is what Jeremy Howe is. We're going to take a really quick break, and then we're going to run through the team news. We're going to talk about Max, and hopefully not rushing him. Anyway, that's my theory. We'll talk about Fritter because Fritter is simply one of the most underrated forwards in the comp. Just don't think he gets the recognition competition wide. And I just want to wax lyrical about him because I bloody love him. And the record at And the AO. record at AO, which is stupid. Clarion track nine and two. Yeah. Is that the record? Yeah. Oh, that's that's crazy. We'll be back soon. This halftime break is brought to you by Liquorland. Liquorland have all your drink needs when the siren calls. Smithies. Smithies. Joel Smith. Son of Sean. Oh, that mark of the Gabba. Mark of the century. Righto Mockroft. <laughs> Gary, D's icon. Three games, two goals? Chris Heffernan. Chris Heffernan. <laughs> Shit. I think we'll stop it there. Uh, but anyway, grab a slab of Smitty's Golds for 43 bucks. You can pop into your local liquor land today or shop online and get click and collect in just 30 minutes. Liquor land from the land you love. Please drink responsibly. Let's get back into it. Well, back on the airways, teams have come in. But before we get to them, I'm going to chat about gather round as we gather around the table, boys. And we just had a chat off air. Like, we're a little bit jealous that we're not going because the build up's been amazing. When it was initially announced, I was, I, I was a kind of bit like, oh, whatever. But like, the more that it's, you know, come closer to and the kind of the scenes that are starting to pop up over there, it's, I'm into it. It's cool. And there's a, a few people over there, and apparently the vibe of the city is. A little bit electric, unlike um, most of the vibe in, in Adelaide. Um, <laughs> yeah, how good would it be to be over there and just have literally every kind of supporter base? I'm sure there's not too many Gold Coast or Giants fans over there, but like it would just be, it'd be, it would be cool. I'm into it. And the fact that they're playing footy at your Norwoods, your Adelaide Hills and kind of paying homage to really um, historic and like important football grounds. Um, yeah. I just I look forward to seeing it like travel all over. They simply love their footy, but Slammer, we were just saying it'd be nice knowing that there's this melting pot of footy fans there, all the different supporters in their team colours, and we're just rocking down Hindley <clears throat> Street and we see a few Frio fans, and we're just like, "Hey, Jackson's going well," and they're just like, "Piss off!" And it's just the banter element, I think, would give be really fun. Give us pick five. Give us pick five, fellas. Yeah. It'd be great. A bit different to having nine or 10 teams in Victoria. It's just run of the mill, but I think over there it's more of a festive type feeling. I don't know if anyone watched the front bar last night, but they, they've set up everything over there already and it was good getting on getting uh, around all the sort of the SA football personalities like the Jarmans and Tony Godra and all those blokes. It's, uh, it's got we a real love, we, love, we love the Jarmans. Yeah. <laughs> and Godra. God, they've had some good players. Rashudo. Lots of history there. there. McLeod. Uh, yeah, I just it would be so good if they if they ever did it say in Melbourne. I think it would be really important if they did it at at like a junction oval yeah, or like or like you know like a Fitzroy, you know like yeah. tipping the hat to the grounds that have gone before us, even like at a um, what's it called now? But it was they play Opti- at, it used to be Optus Stadium. Play at Ballarat but, as well, like Bull- Bulldogs yeah. played Ballarat, so they do mm. one there as well. I'm sure. Yeah. Could they do Glen? Very oval, or is it it's not so fit small. for purpose? Nah. It's so yeah. small. Some of the grounds I used to play on, like two two seconds from my place, the old Fitzroy Oval on uh, on St George's, oh, sorry, yeah. on Brunswick Street. Yeah, can't believe they used to play VFL there. How small? It's it tiny. Is. Yeah, it is quite. It's small. pretty wide though. Yeah, yeah. It's but more just wide, the, the, yeah. the the fact that they got crowds in there of like thirty thousand. I don't know yeah, where they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blokes would be binning them from the center square. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but people used to stand on their beers to, to to get a good view. But like, oh, imagine a game at Vic Park. Imagine Collingwood playing at Vic Park again. Oh. That would be mental. I'd almost go to that just as a oh, neutral. You would walk. You wouldn't walk out there alive. Yes, I, I would. They wouldn't know who I am. Talking of grounds, the Adelaide Oval. I think it's been in. It's been operating in its new capacity since oh, here 2013 or something. So before that was Footy Oval or Football Oval or whatever it was called. Um, so we Melbourne's played there. 15 times since I think it's 2013 and our record is, is 10 and five. So 66%, which is the second best West coast have actually got the best um, win rate there. Well, 69%. Off. 
Um, yeah. But dogs. Since the let's just say yeah. since the goat era, so Clary era and, and Petrarca, they're they I think you mentioned off the top, they're they're nine and two. Mm. Clary absolutely loves that ground. He averages 30, 30 touches, he's kicked eight goals at the ground as well. So if you put that into perspective, he's he's played seventy five games at the G. And he's kicked. He's only kicked nineteen goals. Wow! So from eleven games, he's kicked eight goals at Adelaide Oval. I think he'll be licking his lips, especially with the forecast as well. He's going to be in in everything. It's going to be a, a wet weather game, and he'll be that uh, key extractor again for us. I'm sure. Yeah, we love Adelaide Oval. Do um, they have anyone that can go to any of our boys who are going over? As in, do they have any kind of run with players? Oh, we're talking about Essendon. Langford is he? Uh, uh, you wouldn't he? want to do that with Langford because Langford's actually been really, really good. In his either he's a swing man, so he goes forward or goes back. You can't really tag our players, can you? Nah. Well, they've tried. Martin's a big, big enough guy to run with, like a, Cl- a Clary or a yeah. um, truck. But I don't know if he's got the the tank. Yeah, yeah. I, I, do. I can't imagine they have anyone as I look through their list at the moment. Not really. Maybe like Setterfield could try his heart out. Mm. Good luck. And Clary's in career best form, and he has been for his whole career. <laughs> um, we'll get to the, the changes. So for Essendon, Will Snelling in, uh, Alwyn Davey Jr. managed, uh, Sam Chufter Wiedemann injured. That's sad. We don't, oh, we yeah. don't get to see him stink it up. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes, Sam. Sorry. It's disrespectful. We love you, Sam. I wish him well, to be honest. Yeah, we, of course. Yeah. But, um, happy that he plays for them now. Uh, ins, it was a backhanded compliment. Um, for us, that is Adam Tomlinson, Ben Brown out, big out. Jake Lever injured, uh, so he obviously didn't get up from that ankle complaint, which is disappointing. But let's not take risks. Mm. Jimmy Jordan, he's out as the sub. Maybe he'll be made the sub again. So just quickly, the emergencies: Bailey Laurie after he's thirty-five, Jake Melksham, James Jordan, and uh, Disco Turner. Good to see Disco in there. I think Jimmy Jordan will end up being the sub. It makes so much sense if it's wet as yep. well. Uh, and then Michael Hibbard's been managed as well, so they haven't taken. Um, uh, any risks with him, which is great. Like, I think we're learning as a club. So just if there's any doubt, any slither of doubt, just put him on ice. Levers, is Lever's ankle bad? Do I we don't know? think so. Is it precautionary? Maybe? I don't believe so. So he had some he had some tests. They were confident he was going to play. They probably just said, let's, let's just give the wake. Get him right. That's the mail that we've all been given. We haven't heard anything else. Um, it would be a huge blow if it was lot longer for mm. a considerable time out but like jake lever i was saying it to you guys off air like if you're ever going to lose him maybe lose him in a game of wet weather footy so we think it's going to be wet it will Saturday. be wet so is that that's the forecast it's market. gonna there's gonna be yeah. a lot of rain uh in the very early hours up until early morning and then i think there's going to be a bit of a break when our game's on no but, then it, but it's but it's going to be wet again they're from saying, like the second, late second quarter. And so you reckon yeah. that that's not a huge disadvantage having Lever go out in those conditions? Jake Lever is one of my favourites, as everyone knows. I need to preface that. But I think this isn't a game for defensive aerialists like him. He's the best in the comp at intercepting. He's back to 2021 Lever. So bringing the ball to ground is going to be quite easy for anyone to affect a contest. So I think losing him... As much as it'll hurt us from a setup point of view, because he's a bit of a general, he likes directing traffic, his leadership's unreal. You can see that. That'll hurt. There's no doubt about that. Maisie will have to step up into that role. I think it's more just the fact that it'll be easy to kill the ball in those conditions if it's scrappy, if it's a bit of a bog on the weekend. So, yes, it's Jake Lever. He's one of the premier defenders in the comp, but... I'm like, I think we can cover it. And Tomo, but Tomo's also, been good. Yeah, but also, Tomo's yes, been it's good. Tomo who like, we have confidence in to come in and, and do his thing. Um, it's interesting that Ben Brown has come in because we... Yeah. Is mean, it interesting though? But I, well, yeah, kick nine goals already. Yeah, but it's, it's more interesting that they haven't dropped any of the other big boys. Mm. That's what's interesting for Goody me. Goody was saying that they can work together. Yeah. And so now we get to see it and we said off air that it's a really good indicator of um, who gets to stay, who, you know, because they all will be there, you know, who wants to play for their spot. You can't see them all tearing it up though, can you? You no. feel like there's going to be one 
no. one quiet game out of the three. But, you know, Ben Brown, when when Gorn's back, um, Ben Brown's not going to be in the ruck. Mm. And when Gorn's back, to, um, T-Mac's not really going to be in the ruck. But I see JVR being someone who can give us a couple of a couple of contests in the ruck when you're gone and Grundy's are back playing together. Well, it begs the question then, Harrison Petty this week, Tom McDonald, Ben Brown, what's the Petty board plays setup? back. Petty plays back, yeah. Started to look, and it's really funny because I went really hard on this last week and I was like, Petty has to stay forward. Started to look like he lost a little bit of forward craft the way he was jumping at the ball. He flew under it a couple of times. Oh, that was one that was a complete howler. Yeah, I think... I know I don't mind. Like I think the guy is going to have games where if Goody swings him forward. He potentially changes his game, kicks goals, impacts the contest, and people go, "Well done, Goody, master stroke it when he um, put him." It's forward. horses for courses. Yeah. Like I think I think it made sense when he did, and I was, as we said, we were so surprised when we saw him starting forward. It was like oh, threw okay. Sydney out. Oh, threw me off. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Goody's making big changes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I just, I just, I think now that you know, with, when you've got all those three forwards playing, it's just like he, he plays back. Even though Petty had a, a couple of sort of quieter moments in that game, I still think the way that he attacks the ball is yeah. different to a Brown and stuff. So sure. if you are sort of, yeah, if, if your opposition's getting on top, it, it's always a great option to have to throw someone like him for because you know he's just going to crash. He's packs. a competitor. Yeah. He's a, he's a competitor for sure. I don't know if Adelaide forecasts because the, Bureau here in Melbourne just absolutely stinks it up. You can look at a forecast a couple of days out and it says it's going to pour and then it's just sunny. I hope that's the case because looking at Essendon... Are you looking at weather or are you looking at... they are, No, I'm looking at Essendon's setup. They are so short. Like their forward line setup on paper at the moment is Jai Menzi, Harrison Jones, Darcy Parrish, Archie Perkins, Jake Stringer and Nick Martin. There's a few other players that can roll through there like Will Snelling, obviously Kyle Langford... He's got a bit of height about him. And then they can obviously rotate between Draper and um and Phillips. But if it's if it doesn't rain, <laughs> we could have a field day. What what time like are we playing again? Are we playing four ten or but something? But they, they don't have two meter Peter at the moment anyway. So no. that's not a selection. So he's their big key forward. Are they missing anyone else up forward or is that just their team? No, Harrison well, Jones Chukta. is pretty tall. They're just no good. Uh, Cox. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they've got these, like they've got a lot of these like promise and these young players who can't get on the park. Like your Nick's Cox. Yeah. Your Reed. Um, their one gun is Perkins of like gun. that young. He's yeah. a gun. He's an absolute gun. And he'll, he'll bob up and kick and a, the other a, one, a couple so, of goals, I reckon. Sorry, Mark. I think the, uh, this battle is all going to be in the midfield. Like I feel like we cover them easily at either end of the ground. I think our defenders are better than their forwards, and our mm. forwards are probably going to be better than their defenders. They do have some good mids, mm. and one that I wanted to highlight is Darcy Parrish, who, if yeah. you look at his stats for the start of this year, he's elite in pretty much every category. Mm. Funny, he was the same draft as Clary. Obviously, pick five. Clary's pick four. It was always talk that Melbourne were looking seriously at him. He's from the Geelong Falcons, and and then Clary. Sort of the famous story of Rusey seeing the footage of Clary, and he was sort of touted at sort of fifteen ish. Thanks, and Paul. Then, yeah, and then Paul said, "Well, if there's fourteen players better than him, I'd like to see it." And mm. then so we stuck with him, and the rest is history. Out the first hundred fifty games speak for themselves. And, but Parrish is on a on a good trajectory as well. Obviously, you can't compare to Clary, yeah. but he's in ripping form. Pa- yeah, he's a gun, and there's no he, doubt you in need that. to you need to watch him. And even you know, um, Shield. Who else have they got rolling through there? Oldwell. No, there's a couple of others that I'm missing. Who are they? Or um, Merritt. Yeah, Merritt. Of course. There's and then other. Perkins runs through there. Perkins is, Perkins is a fine, like a great player, and I think he's going to be an absolute jet. Stringer sometimes come. gives them a couple, but also, like I say, say they get us in the midfield. It's like our back line and, and their forward line, like we've just got them there. I think you it's more I mean? the synergy it's... and the chemistry of the back line at the moment. I think. You can tell the really good teams versus the average teams and it's the way that defences bring the ball to ground. It's the way that they come around the back for handball. They get out of traffic. They exit. They relieve pressure with a short kick. They make good decisions. We've been like that for three years. I've watched a bit of Essendon. They're still a little bit sloppy in that department. They'll get better as they go on because they don't have a lot of games into their list yet. 
but all the best teams are the ones that can absorb pressure and exit from defensive 50. That's why I've got so much confidence in Melbourne, even though it's going to be wet. Like I think ground ball wise, like last week I was so impressed with Jake Bowie. Chris McVie I thought was awesome at the way that he mopped up. And then I love the way that Brayshaw, Hunter and Langdon get behind the ball and help out as well. I always think that's a good mark of a team. Yeah. Essendon Hunter's is still been, struggling Hunter's in that Hunter's been surprising me with the amount of run that, you know, oh. usually it's always like, oh, Langdon's right there helping out. And so is Hunter. It, it says, what are we, 410 or something? Is yeah. That, it says 50% chance rain, 60% chance at five, oh. and 80, 80% chance at, at six. So Bomb Six is, is nearly the end miss. of the game. Yeah. The, I think <clears> just the only... The only thing we need to watch early on is the clearances. Um, even against West Coast, who were playing basically a waffle team at quarter time, we were down in the in the clearance count against them, and so didn't have a, a recognised ruckman, and we we're still losing that. Obviously, the tables got turned big time in the third quarter, but a team like Essendon, they're probably a lot further advanced in the middle of the ground than what um, what West Coast are. So we just need to watch that early, and I think if we can get that right, I think the rest of it will just uh, take care of itself. Just. Before we do predictions, I wanted to talk about Max quickly and Fritter. Max listed as one to two now. It's great. Don't get me wrong. Recovery seems like it's going beautifully. But I still want to push that whole thing of just not bringing him back too early. I am absolutely no medical expert, as probably 99.9% of people are that listen to this podcast. There's clearly a few doctors that listen because they're Melbourne supporters. But it's this this gripe that I have with it from last year, the way that we brought him back. He was so ginger in that game down the highway that Mark and I were at. You could just tell. I think he clunked one or he didn't have a mark. It was either him or Jackson only took one mark between them. It was so unlike Max. I don't want to see a repeat of that. That's just me being a very cautious Melbourne supporter. Like, please, please for the love of God. D- don't risk him in a Anzac Eve clash. I know it's a big night. It's a very special occasion. It means so much. Just don't bring him back. Yeah. We've got North the following week. At I, th- G. I, th- I think the fact that Nane Curvis is, isn't playing is like... Don't bring him back. Yeah, it's like the exclamation mark, exclamation mark, sorry, on that. Yeah. And I, but I also know what like a player's... No, I'm not... A, I've never been able to play. But like the player's mentality is the players <laughs> want to... No, I never played. Never played? But the players want to play. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's like if they're right, they play. What did you always envisage yourself being as an AFL player? What What would you? Who would you Stewie like to be? Stu- yeah, yeah. And a bit of Jimmy Bartel. Whoa! <laughs> I in, was Gary in Lyon. the air. In the air. You were Gary yeah. Lyon. <laughs> Showing my age a bit. I was. <laughs> uh, I was Cal Morton. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then Neats as well. I was, I was. I was Cal Morton. It wouldn't have worked. Cal Morton. Well. <laughs> or maybe a Cam Bruce, who we were speaking about before. Today. Brad Green. <laughs> oh yeah, let's put this out to the uh, listeners. Brad Green or Cam Bruce? Who do you think's uh, yeah. more valuable? Nice one. Yeah. I well, like Cameron Bruce didn't try out for Manchester United under 17s, did he? So yeah. So. <laughs> Remember that was the old. The uh, stories of me. I, yeah. I was always a green boy. Yeah. yeah. Put that. They were both so good. Let's let's put that. You're, one you're out. Always, now you, I, I love thinking like, how would they go? And would they they be getting a regular game in this current current team? Surely. Yeah. Or well, I like. Well, <sighs> Green in the sense he would be a great like third string forward, forward. but then we also have Fritch, who's <laughs> it's a very interesting <laughs> thing to consider. There'd be a lot of players from that Danaher era that would potentially struggle to get in, which is crazy because there was there were a lot of good players, mm. and they're some of my favourites ever. Oh, I'd love a Davy in there to that. An Aaron Davy to put forward pressure on would be unbelievable. That'd be a good thing to do maybe for next week is just do a, ta- a team from the last twenty years and see who gets in. Yeah. I'd take a Nathan Brown off the halfback. We should do that. Yeah, it's a good shout. I, re- I reckon I might look into that one, Slammer. Um, Bailey Fritch. Last thing before we do predictions, wrap up. So Bay Bay. <clears throat> Some listeners hate that, but uh, it's Nuggets thing. He's he's kicked nine goals already in three goals. He's kicked nine goals already in three goals. That's in, hard. In three games. <laughs> that is hard. In three games. He's tracking to 60 plus at the moment. Maybe he keeps it up. I think he should have got an All-Australian jacket last year. I'm not really dirty on it too much because I don't, doesn't bother me that much, the All-Australian. It's a bit of a farce the way it gets selected. There are a lot of favourites. Some of the selectors are biased, blah, blah, blah. Bailey Fritch, though, just as a as a quantity and as, a, as an asset, like, man, the 
the guy is so clinical. He's only getting better. He's 26. I don't think he's reached his peak yet. There's still a lot of amazing games to come from him. Recognition as well. Do we care that much that other teams and other supporters from other clubs don't rate him as much as we do? Do we really care or do we think that the guy deserves to be spoken about in the same way that like people have pumped up an Isaac Heaney who's had a shocking start to the season, by the way? Like he's never in the conversation. I just find it baffling. Well, it would be similar <clears throat> to um, uh, to the, the Hawthorne boys. So um, Bruce and uh, Gunston never really got the kudos that Buddy and and Roughhead mm, were getting. That's a good. It's that's just good it's the same thing, right? But all the Hawks play, all the Hawks supporters would have loved Bruce and and still do, and then um, Gunston as well, and they got four flags. So He's I our best forward, though. Melbourne, there's, there's Melbourne only, there's supporters only, just want to get flags. There's only so many players that I guess op- opposition fans can really like put Melbourne players on a pedestal. Yeah, and it's it's so easy to, and it's and rightly so that we have Clary, Track, Gorn, May, Lever. Yeah, but it's like Fritch is like Cosy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Cosy. You know what I mean? Like it's I I that's a a great point that you make about like the Hawthorne team. And I like I love Bruce. I love Bruce so much. I think he's like one of the smartest small forwards I've ever seen play the game. The way he finishes and the way he reads the ball off the pack. But Fritch is just like he's he's so hard to play on. Like it's how do you match up on someone like that who is so wiry? He's so silky. When the ball hits the deck, he can turn on a dime and he just knows where the goals are. Yeah. His finishing skills are unbelievable and his aerial skills are just as good. Like, he's just, he's such a weird matchup. He's such a good footballer. I hate to play he's on so, him. Like, when you describe Clary, you'd think, oh, or even Petrucca, they're just balls, like they're contested balls. He's like a beautiful footballer. Yeah, like yeah, Like, he's yeah. someone that's so balanced. He can easily swing onto his left and just hit targets in flight. Or And his goal kicking is, you know, if there's anyone in the league that you want to kick a goal after a siren, it's probably him. Five yep. five kicks in a game is all he needs. And he's, he's probably going to kick you three. Yeah, like in the grand final. He was yeah. amazing last week. I think he had 17, kicked three, had three goal assists. He set up, yeah. His field kicking was... Unreal as, as well. As soon as he gets it, like, and he's within range, though, it's just like, and he's swinging onto that left. You just go, oh, goal. Can That's, get a bit hungry, though, as well. Yeah. And, but, yeah. but Was I, it last I, year I, he was running in and he didn't give the hands? Yeah. But yeah, like, a little I, bit yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also, you're, you're he's the leading your goal des- he's, He deserves to be hungry. Yeah. How good's the ball in hand inside 50? And as a supporter in the stands, you just pull on the finger. You're like, Yeek. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I love he that Clary's worked that. Well. His Clary started to, to bring the, the point in after goals as well. Very Jonathan Brown. Yeah. Love it. Frida turns to the crowd a bit. Yeah, he loves the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves himself. He loves his hair. He, so <laughs> he should. Yeah. Plenty he's of a, it. He's a gun. Keep loving yourself, Frida. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right, predictions. Um, I can start. So, look, games against Essendon have been weird. Really weird. They've almost been turgid. They've been shocking. There's been a couple of shockers at Marvel. Even when we were really bad and they were thereabouts, okay, yeah, they were weird games. Yeah, weird games. They've always been strange. I don't think we've had many classics, high quality. If it's going to be rain, it's not going to be high quality. They're just odd. And I don't want to be disrespectful to Essendon, but fuck it, I will be. I feel like they've brought us down to their level at times. I really do. And I think it's going to be similar on the weekend. I can't, I can't see us blowing them out of the water, to be honest, just because of the history of these clashes. I want us to. I want us to absolutely roast them. But I think it'll just be kind of neck and neck, a classic pull away late in the third in a similar way to the way we did it last year. And we just end up winning by about three or four goals. I think that's what it's going to be. Mm, not a bad shout. I think that... It's a little, it's a little bit interesting in in that we're playing them at Adelaide Oval, and we do have such a good record against Adelaide Oval, if that's even a thing. But because it's them, it kind of changes it up a bit. But I agree. I just think um, we're just we're just simply a, a much better football team. Like I, I think they're playing a bit better than what they have been. Obviously, with the new coach and everything, but I can't see them making finals and. You know, this should just be another 30-point win. Routine. Yeah. Slammer. 
Well, Adzi's uh, not here. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to do the, the typical Adzi Do what one you or? know. Do no, your I'll prediction. Do mine. I'll yeah, do mine. Do your prediction. My <laughs> prediction is, if you look at who they've played so far, three of their wins uh, against teams who are currently in the bottom four. So that has to Freya. come into it. Yeah. Um, Melbourne, on in con- contrast, Melbourne are, are scoring the lights out. Where you know the kick the most points um, for in the competition. We love the ground. Um, our two best players thrive there, um, and I just think that we've got, you know, I think we've got the early runs on the board this season to 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 catapult again from this game, and I think we want to fly into that Richmond game as well. So I don't know if I'm. If I'm honest, I think I'm pretty close to what you guys are, are sort of thinking around three or four goals, but it could also break open in the second half. So I'm going to say 45 points. Oof. Yeah, nice. Bigger than I expected. I was I'll hoping for him to just go 85 points. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Matt would have done. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you, you're your own man, so don't worry about it. Where is he at the moment? He's, He's in WA. In WA. Not WA of all places. Did Sal- he go to the Sal- game? Salus to Swim with snorkeling, some sharks really western all. point of WA, central didn't, WA. Didn't want to go to the game on the weekend? No, we were brought this up at uh, Easter lunch, actually. Didn't Shocking call to, from Matt. Didn't go to it's the like, game. It's like, you're going to be there. Didn't go to the game. Yeah. That's all right. Anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Um, boys, great pod. Slamma. Thanks for having me. Great to have Thanks you Thanks for in, being here. As always. Good not not just both. a ring in. I'm a ring in, but that's nah, okay. No, no, no. I'm happy you... to play my role. <laughs> Footy talk. Are you the nibbler? <laughs> yeah. 11 tackles. <laughs> yeah, true. true. <laughs> Explosive. Yeah. You're the nibbler of the team. Maybe you're the Jimmy Jordan, sorry. Just bit, dropped. Bit unlucky, dropped, and you come. <laughs> nah, he's not a Jimmy John. Hey. Well, who are you guys? Uh, I'm Clary. I'm your Bailey. <laughs> I love that <laughs> everyone's just on <laughs> Barry. Who are you? Uh, I'll take Bailey. Oh, love who's it. Adzi? Uh, Adzi, everyone wants to be Clary, right? Yeah. Nuggets would want to say he's Clary. Yeah. I'd, no, actually, I'll take Nuggets Bowie. Nuggets is Bowie. Oh, okay. Clearly, the red hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, he's Peter Walsh. That's who he is. Uh, we'll wrap it up there Monday or not Monday. We'll do it on Sunday. Sunday review show. I don't know. Myself, Benny Lee, Scotty. Just don't eat a steak and, and Toff. Maybe. Yeah, just I'm not eating steak for a long time. Trust me. Are they coming in? Does Toff ever come in? Do, well, you, ever, do you ever do it here? No, or we don't. It? It's okay. just like family duties. Toff's trying to grow grass in his backyard. That's, That's a big job. Mm. Grass. Yeah, grass. Yeah. Exactly. It's a thing. So we'll be back on, Mon- uh, on Sunday figure out who that's with um, and hopefully a big win or hopefully just a four, four points. Just just keep getting four points. Just just get the job done. Thanks just, to everyone for listening. Them. Yeah. And thanks to Slammer. Pleasure. The Good nibbler. Here. The nibbler of the side. Thanks for listening to the debrief and of course a big thanks to Liquorland who are proud partners of the show. Liquorland have all your drink needs for when the siren calls. Liquorland from the land you love. Please drink responsibly. Hope you enjoyed the show.